Hello and welcome to another episode of Mad Tech. My name is Matt and today we're going to be quickly looking at Irfanview's uh, batch rename functionality. Um, Irfanview is a pretty awesome image viewer and uh, editor and one of the like side applications that's built in, almost like a plug-in, is the batch conversion and rename tool here. You see it has its own window here that will pop up and uh, we want to make sure that we're in batch rename mode so as you can see here on the top left we want to make sure that we have the batch rename mode selected now let's find some let's say for example this, this program is an image editor so let's work with some images at first now let's find some images here that uh, that might be scattered about and named random uh, random names so of course I have the Microsoft sample images and uh, let's go ahead and add these files to our batch. Down here is the list that's going to show up of files that are going to be processed through this tool. So you can browse around different locations and add them to your process list. And it's going to output them to the directory defined here, in this case ctemp it's going to output them to. I'm just going to leave it there for now. You can do whatever you want with that. Um, you can also do use current look in directory and that means that it's going to actually um, put it in the directory that you have selected up in your browse window in the top right here. So once we have some images selected, um, let's go ahead and actually figure out how are we going to rename these. Well, let's make an imaginary scenario and uh, let's say that these are all pictures of our pets. So um, I've kind of thought of a naming scheme here. You can think of whatever you want. It's uh, currently, well, actually, it's the 1st of December. So let's do December Pets 2013. And uh, so it's just going to put every single one of these files as December under Pets under 2013. That's not good because they're all going to be called the same thing. They're either going to overwrite or it's going to error out because it can't call everything the exact same thing. So um, what we can do to add a numbering scheme, so say it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Um, if we had a thousand images here, it would go you know, 1 through a thousand or, um, and, uh, and count them all the way up consecutively as it processes them. Um, you can sort them in the list, move up and down in the list so that they will number properly as you choose. Um, so the way that you define a number counting scheme essentially is with the pound sign and uh, we can put in say four pound signs and that'll do 2013 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 3 etc and it'll count up as it processes them to look a little bit more in depth we're going to go farther in depth into this capability with the, ne the next example but I just want to show you real quick in the options button here this is where you define that variable for the, the pound, one digit of a number right there. It's going to start at the number one and it's going to increment by one um, each time. So it'll go one plus one is two, plus one is three, plus one is four. And it'll move up as it goes. Um, so this will be zero, 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 one, zero, 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 two, etc this part will be static. It'll always be called DEC under pets under 2013. So we don't need any additional renaming so I'm going to clear those out and hit OK here. So what we should have is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, files ending up in CTEMP. This is going to be December under or DEC under pets under 2013 and then with numbers. So let's do a run test rename because I don't actually want to run this but uh, you're going to see it's going to OK, so it's going to create from this first file, it's going to create C temp December under pets 0001, 0002, etc. So let's go ahead and do this and return the batch. And let's actually go to C temp and see the file naming scheme is exactly how we defined. So this really helps if you have, say, from your digital camera and it just has a random string of numbers. Um, you can group up them and say from 
my trip, this date, or whatever. So let's load a different example here. One cool thing, by default, the types of files that it's going to look for are common graphic files, so JPEGs and GIFs and stuff like that, PNGs. But you can select all files, and you can actually do these operations on all sorts of files. It doesn't matter what they are. So I just created a different scenario here. Um, and these are just fake files that are completely empty, but txt under file.txt and avi under file.txt. So let's see what we can do with these um, with a little bit more processing on the name. So let's remove all and let's add all to add these new files to our processing list. And uh, I want to get a little bit more into the renaming options here. So one thing that I wanted to do that I wanted to show you they can be very useful depending on what you're trying to do uh, with your rename job is to actually replace the text that's existing in the file itself so if uh, the the file has the word file in it which both of ours do avi under file and txt under file let's go ahead and call it um, cunv works conversion works um, and let's call it Let's see. Well, we want to make sure that we still have the word AVI and TXT because we uh, we don't want to change that. We still want to know which one's which. So let's keep the original file name. You can do it, that with the dollar sign, capital N, as defined here with this variable, old file name, without the file extension. So for the first one, for example, that dollar sign N actually represents AVI underscore file. But where it finds file, it's going to convert it to CONV works. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and just go with this. We actually don't need to increment by any numbers because we know that each file is actually going to be distinct with one another. Um, down here, you can choose if you want to uh, copy the original file which keeps the original file or keeps the original file in its place it doesn't touch it at all and it just makes a copy move will actually not leave them in the source directory and then rename actually just renames the files that are actually already there to start with I always just leave it on copy I don't think there's any reason not to um, why not keep your original version and then overwriting uh, if the file that you're trying to convert, uh, like how we were doing before, the example was with the without having the numbers on the sa same file name, so they're all going to be identical. What do you do if you find a file in your target location that already exists? So no rename is the default, and that's what I leave it as: is it will not put the file there, and it will not do anything to the file that is trying to um, that it has a conflict with create a duplicate file name so it's gonna um, create numbers at the end of it um, so it will not re overwrite the file that already exists in target and then overwrite existing files which is self-explanatory so let's leave it at no rename at all now your options that you set here um, I know that it's not necessarily as robust with a lot of logic that you can put into a lot of other tools but uh, it does. It can take some time and thinking to get these set up. So you can actually save them to profiles here that you can then use and pull up at a later date. So what this should do is it should take our original file name, avi underscore file. It's going to take the word file and it's going to replace it with convworks. So let's do OK. It's going to put it into ctemp. There should be two files that show up there. Okay, um, just a couple more options that I'll show you here uh, include subdirectories, and then this will, uh, of course, just add any subdirectories that are beneath the directories that you add to your batch job. Show preview image is again assuming that you're actually dealing with images here, and these are just fake empty files, so the preview image isn't going to work anyways. But you can uncheck that, and it will not attempt to show the preview image. So let's just uh, instead of doing the test, let's just start batch and let's browse to our directory C temp and here are our two files so it was avi underscore file 
um, and uh, now it's AVI under CONV works, so it converted properly. And then the same thing with our text file. So we have some renamed files here, these with a consecutive number amount, and then these actually using logic to replace text and use the current existing file name in the target file name as well. So I hope this showed you a little bit about the renaming utility that is built into EarthenView. Go ahead and play around with it. If you ever need to rename a bunch of files, it's a great way to do it. It doesn't have to be images, and again, you just get it from the file menu, batch conversion, rename. Thanks again. My name is Matt with Mad Tech.